What's going on you lot? So today I'm gonna to break down and show you the behind the scenes of my new film, Space Travel. Three, two, one, zero. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. So if you haven't already seen that film, I'll leave a little link in the description so you can go and check it out. So to give you a little bit of context, a company called Allianz actually challenged me to make a film around the topic of how do we travel in the future? So basically, Allianz have got this Explorer program which challenges creators each and every single month to make a film or a video on a certain topic. Now every month there's a winner. You can win up to 5,000 euros. So instantly when they told me that, my ears perked up. So like any good Samaritan, I was like, hold on a sec, Allianz, challenge accepted. You lot know me, I don't mind a little challenge, especially when it comes to filmmaking. Boom, so obviously the topic of how do we travel in the future, I started getting some ideas together. So instantly when I thought of future of travel, space came to mind, mate. Now obviously people are already like trying to get to the moon and Mars and all stuff like that. So I thought, yeah, let's see if I can make a film based around that subject, about the subject of actually traveling intergalactically. That word is honestly just so sick. Anyway, so what I typically do is make storyboards, mate. So here is my like initial kind of visuals. So my initial ideas for this film were the imagination of a young boy. Now this storyline kind of hit home for me because when I was younger, even still now, like space massively excites me. And I thought, you know what? I could make this film about a young boy who is obsessed with going to space. Now I've been doing storyboards ever since I very started filmmaking. And for me, it just allows me to actually remember the shots that are in my head when I was in that most creative space. So when I'm really thinking about ideas and everything is really, really flowing, I make sure that I jot down and draw the shots that I see in my head. Because then basically all I've got to do is capture them shots. Because I know that the film already looks good because I've seen it in my head. I then just have to draw down them images and actually find out a way to recreate them images with actors, with cameras, with locations, with sound. So yeah, that's why I like doing storyboards. Anyway, let's crack on with this very first scene and um, break it down. So you lot know me, I'm all about using things that are actually accessible to me and keeping it low budget. And the camera that I was using was my Sony a7S Mark II um, and just the lenses that I had lying around. And then I actually just borrowed a lens from a friend so that I could get like a 35 mil. 35 mil was a lens that I really, really wanted to actually use. Now, when I initially put this idea together thinking, right, I want a young boy in this video, I was thinking, hold on a sec, where the hell am I gonna get one of them from? You can't just go down a shop and buy one. So I was thinking, right, what is accessible to me? So I actually decided to use my little cousin. So the very, very first shot was really important to me because I wanted this very first shot to tell a story in itself. So we've got this first shot and we actually shot this in my office. I used the table that I've already got in my office and then used a few little props that I got from down like the charity shop. So you can see I've centered the boy in the middle of the frame and then his environment should actually tell you a little bit about him. We're instantly starting to learn a little bit about this boy. It's obviously nighttime, you can tell by the lighting and he's got all of these different space props around him. So this shot is straight away telling us that this young boy is obsessed with space. Now secondly, the lighting was really important for me on this scene and I'll be honest with you, I only really used two main lights and then main lights aren't even filmmaking or camera lights. On the right hand side, I use like a desk lamp that I've had for about 12 years. So I actually found an old TV that I had like up in my loft. So the TV was actually being a practical light in the frame. So yeah, if you look on the left hand side of frame here, this is actually the TV making all of the different kind of flashes on the side. And it was basically giving like this flickering effect to show that he was actually in his room watching TV. Now what I've done with this TV is I actually put a blue gel over the screen to really contrast the warm light from the desk lamp. So the flickering from scenes on the TV really gave it like a natural organic feel and it showed that the boy was actually watching something about space as you can tell from the audio in the film. And then other than these two lights, I literally used one light just to fill in on his dark shadows. We're using literally the cheapest old red edge that I've had for about four years. Don't recommend them, but they're cheap and they work, so. Now you'll notice that I refer to my storyboard a lot, and um, that is basically just because I have learned to kind of trust my vision that I had when I very first started thinking about my ideas. So I'll actually go back, refer to my storyboard, and literally 
almost use it religiously. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm always adapting it when it's on set because some things that you had in your head just aren't actually physically possible in the real world. Now, the actual camera movement for this film, I wanted to be very natural, mainly handheld. Now, you'll notice that I'll be on the tripod for some of the shots and they're for ones that I actually just wanted to lock off and then I'll probably push in in post. But 99% of the time, I was actually shooting it handheld because I wanted this kind of natural feel because a boy's kind of imagination is very natural and it's not very static and robotic. I wanted it to feel natural, lots of kind of natural movement in it. That's why I went for a more handheld look. Now, the close-ups in this video were actually really, really important to me because it actually shows George and who he is. So these close-ups are really just showing his passion for what he's actually thinking about and it makes us feel like we know him a little bit. So for me, nailing these close-up shots was so important because it is kind of the fundamental story of the film. Now, one of the hardest shots in this entire film was shooting across this kind of makeshift bed that I made. Good old sofa bed. Basically, everything that you can actually see in this set I've like borrowed off of people or just found lying around, so try and keep it low budget. You know how it is. Now, that actually works, mate. Sick. Right, let's get the pillow. George, you're not actually allowed to go to sleep. Oh. You're an actor today. Oh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna like use the bed as a bit of foreground shoot this way past the teddy, past the pillow, to then obviously reveal George at his desk. Because if you don't show a bed in the room, it doesn't necessarily show that it's actually a bedroom. Because if we just showed that, people might just think, oh, it's an office, but this is George's bedroom. So we need to actually show a bed. And then this light here is actually gonna act as a bit of moonlight coming through this window that is up here, which is obviously that one. But as we're flipping the room around, I need to make sure that the light from the moonlight is actually coming from here down onto the teddy, so yeah. Now the difficulty of this shot was I couldn't get the bed at the right height. The composition that I could see in my head just wasn't working in real life and it took me about an hour of just moving everything around to actually get the composition perfect. Now one of the interesting things about this scene is the fact that I actually flipped the set. Because I wanted to be shooting over to the left hand side of the set, I didn't have a wall there. My office is like a big rectangle. So if I was shooting over George's right shoulder, you'd just be able to see my office and you wouldn't be able to see that it's actually a bedroom. Instead of shooting that way, we're actually gonna flip the set. Now this is gonna go on the other side and then we're gonna shoot that way so that we shoot into the wall. Yeah, when we was actually shooting past the bear on that side, this is actually the set now. So if you look at the way the set is, that shot would have been shot this way, but we faked it, turned it around, Shot it that way. So this light is the original light that's actually lighting George. This light here is gonna be a small amount of hair light on his back, just as a bit of moonlight coming in through the window. TV's still there, casting light on him, and this is just gonna fill us in a little bit. So hopefully, once I turn the lights off, it looks okay. Now what I'm gonna do is, because I've now put that moonlight outside, the window looks a bit flat, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get some water, stick the water on the window, and it should give it a bit more of an interesting kind of perspective of like raindrops. Smashed it, bosh, first scene done. How did you feel about that, George? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. You looking forward to the next two scenes? Yeah. Now obviously I am from Essex and I really wanted to utilize what my environment and what my area actually has to offer. I wanted to make a film that actually proved to myself that I could make like a decent film in my own environment where I live. I don't need to travel to all of these extravagant places to actually create a really good story. So I really wanted to use the environment around me and then exaggerate them little environments depending on the composition. So if you look at this shot here, I've tried to make this hill kind of look really big and make it look vast, but it's literally just like a little step down to the river. So just playing around with your compositions in certain areas can really make a big difference and take your audience into another environment than what you're actually shooting in. Yeah, mate, that's it. Banging. That Georgie, sick. well done, mate. We've smashed that one. Oh my God, mate. The weather was not ideal on most of the days that we were shooting, mate. Honestly, British weather, do us a favor, Sean. We do not need no rain during a shoot. In a lot of my shots, I've actually shot at a really shallow depth of field. Now, I actually used ND filters for this shoot because I wanted to shoot everything really, really soft. I actually wanted to make the film look quite dreamy. We're in this kid's imagination and everything's kind of flowing and juicy. And I wanted to show that via the shot. Also, having a shallow depth of field actually disguises the environment. For example, in this kind of long grass shot, 
This bit of grass was literally like a tiny little patch of long, like, yellow grass. And because I actually blew out the background and graded it a certain way, it actually looks like he's in this big, wild summer field when really he's in, like, this little patch of grass in, like, a grubby old swamp. So really utilising your environments in certain compositions actually can tell a really, really interesting story. I actually had to like simulate like a, a rumble or like an earthquake. And this earthquake was actually signalling the fact that a rocket launch was about to go down. Two, one, rumble. <laughs> so to kind of simulate that, I literally held the camera and like micro jitter shook it. Right, so for this shot, I'm actually going to use the glide cam simply because it gives off more like a natural feel and obviously there's like an earthquake slash rocket launch at this point of the film. So I don't want it to be too robotic and static because this is all about George and George is a human being. He's a young boy with a crazy imagination and that is fluid and gimbal shots ain't really fluid. They're quite robotic and like just perfect, but the imagination is flowing and it's like fluid. So exactly like this. Gimbal shots are way too clean, way too perfect to have like a natural feel about them. So for me, the glide cam really has like this natural feel about it. And when I was running with George, I didn't even bother like actually adjusting the framing. I just let the glide cam do what it wanted to do as I was running. And I really liked the effect that it actually gave. It gives this kind of effect of a bit of chaos as well, because it's not actually perfect. The frame is kind of going all over the place and it makes the viewer actually feel a little bit on edge as George is running. So being a filmmaker, you do go through quite a few little bits on set. Old your horses. Trod in a cow poo. It's only a bit of shit. Yeah, just happens, doesn't it? This is old school. This is what I used to do before I even had a glide cam. Okay, Georgie, three, two, one, action. Go up there, let's go up, up into the field. You can hear the rocket. You know what, that wasn't even bad. Whoa. This bit didn't look great, but that bit there, 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 there. Yeah, Jules, that's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Give me one of them, Jules. You smashed that first time. What a G, man. Tell you what, mate, that's actually spot on. I thought I'd need the glide cam for that, but mate, Jules, I'm so happy we got that. Right, so this is gonna be the final scene. I'm gonna shoot this way. I came and scouted it out the other night. The sun does set that way, so it's not gonna be the best way for light. I was here literally like three days ago and it weren't as long as this. And we also don't want to ruin this farmer's crop. So after spending absolutely ages trying to pull off this shot, I went back to the drawing board on it because I was so not happy with it. It was way too static. The lighting was completely off. I wanted it actually to be backlit, but we were front lit. I wanted more camera movement in there to make it more intense. And when I got this shot into the edit, I just looked at it and I thought, nah, this is not the final shot of this film. So I then went onto my original idea that I had for this final shot in a location just down the road from my office actually. And I didn't really decide to use it because it wasn't so accessible as using this field, which is literally just down the road from my house. But I thought, no, you know what? I'm sticking to my guns. This location is so perfect for this final shot. Let's go there at sunset. Hopefully we'll actually get a sunset and me and George can pull off this shot. The lighting was perfect. The sun was just going down on the other side of the cloud so it actually softened the light quite a bit and all of the grass in the foreground was actually backlit so it made sense that when this rocket went up in the air and it's actually shining a bright light that all of these actual pieces of grass were like backlit basically and obviously the last element of this film was actually the rocket going up into the sky now i can tell you now that I am definitely not a special effects genius, mate. I am absolutely rubbish at this kind of stuff and I've only ever done it like twice. So I actually got a bit of smoke footage from like a stock site and then keyed out the black parts of it just so that I could just see the actual smoke. And then all I done was masked it in the frame, added like a lens flare on it, a little bit of grading and um, yeah, it actually looks like a rocket going up into the sky. So happy days, mate. And obviously a film hasn't got that real 
atmosphere and real feel into it unless you do a little bit of sound design, mate. Now, I actually wanted to take my audience Space. into this film with George so that they could be there with him. Now, using sound design actually transports your viewer into the film with the actors. The now, to record my sound design, I literally just I used a uh, Zoom H1, like one of the cheapest little recorders you can actually get. And I just recorded all of the little sounds that I needed to, and yeah, Bob's your uncle. Bosh, so there you go, people. That is the BTS of my film, Space Travel. The main takeaway is utilize the accessible things that you've got. Use your own camera, the lenses that you've actually got, the environment that you've got. Don't be feeling like you need all of this crazy good gear. Man, focus on your story and really find a way to tell the story with what you've got. So let me tell you a little bit about the Allianz Explorer program. Basically, Allianz are challenging creators every single month to make a film or a video on a certain topic. They're not looking for like amazing production quality. They're looking for ideas. They're looking for great stories. It's open to any skill level. Now, once you submit your video, they then pick a winner. Now, this winner doesn't win fiver, 50 quid. They don't even win 500 quid. You can win up to 5,000 euros. You can literally submit from any country in the world and every single month they have a new brief, something fresh. I think it's amazingly beneficial for like creators who haven't really got a brief. Before you actually start getting real clients, it's like, what do I make a film about? And I think with this program, it gives you like a brief every single month and it allows you to really open that idea up to your interpretations. Because I remember like when I very first started out and I didn't really have that much work, I didn't really have anything to aim towards in terms of videos or stories. When I didn't really have any briefs or any client briefs that actually hit, that I had like these set in stone topics that I could go out and actually try and hit as if it was a client brief and then potentially earn 5,000 euros out of it like that. I just think that's massively beneficial. So if any of you are actually going to make a film this month, make sure that you let me know and make sure that you DM me your film because I actually want to give you guys feedback. Like this channel is a two way thing. Obviously I give out videos to you and you lot can see it, but I want to know about you lot because a lot of you lot are actually filmmakers and creators. Send me in your work that you're going to submit to Aliens and I want to check it out, mate. Like I want to know how good you lot are. And I'll be completely honest, I've checked out some of the videos on Aliens and I think that you lot could absolutely smash a lot of them out of the water. I'll leave a little link in the description so you can go and check it out. Anyway, people, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that a lot of these behind the scenes do actually help you out. Thank you to Allianz for actually challenging me to make a film about something that I am actually very, very passionate about. And thanks to Allianz for sponsoring this behind the scenes video so that I could actually bring this video to you. And make sure to DM me your films, man. I want to see them. Best of luck with the submissions and um, have a great day. I've been your boy in a bit.